You're listening to the Hour of the Time. I'm William Cooper. Well, folks, as I promised you last night, the subject is going to be one that some of you don't want to hear about. And we'll just stomp your little feet and throw little tissy fits, but that's okay with me because, frankly, my dear Scarlet, I don't give a damn. I'm not here for ratings. I'm not here because my career is a radio talk show host. I'm not here to make you happy. I'm not here to make a million dollars. I'm just here to try to make a better future for my children. That's it. I've already put my neck in a noose, so there isn't much chance for me, but my children have a chance, and I'm going to give them every chance that I can. When I tell you what I know about other people, folks, I'm not doing it to hurt them or to hurt their families or to tell you that you have to believe what I say or twist your little turntables to go in another direction. No, I'm telling you what I know so that you can use it in your daily life to figure out how you're going to conduct your life and what weight you're going to put on what you hear from some people and how much you're going to research here and there and other places. And that's the way that you should take it, but a lot of you don't. A lot of you are still little bitty children, sheeple, stupid jerks, and so you take it in all kinds of ways uh, that don't even make sense. But that's your prerogative. You can do that if you want to. It just makes those of us who are trying to help you not really want to. <laughs> you see, because I don't gain anything by doing this. If you think in your wildest dreams that this is a way to make money, you're wacko and you need to be locked up in a mental institution. If you think in your wildest dreams that this is fun, you need to be put in solitary confinement in a padded cell. If you think for one minute there isn't better things in my life that I could be doing than this, then you don't even belong on this planet with me. Because, folks... There are so many other things I'd rather be doing than this. But you wouldn't even understand it, most of you. You see, I'm forced into doing this because I know what's coming in the future. Because I've done the research, I've done the studies. At one time I was a member of the Office of Naval Intelligence. I saw a good portion of the plans for the New World Order. Of course, at that time, I really didn't understand it all, and some of it I didn't even understand were plans for the New World Order. But that was changed over about 24, 25 years of researching what it was that I saw. So when I'm sitting here behind this microphone and I tell you things, I tell you things because, one, I know that they're true, I've done the research, and if I don't know that they're true, I'll tell you that it is my opinion. And I really don't care whether you believe me or not. And if you don't like this broadcast, and if you don't derive any worth from it, I suggest you turn off your radio and go get in bed and pull the covers over your head and just stay there. The world would be a lot better off. Because most of what's wrong with this world, folks, most of what wrong is wrong with this world is you. And if you really want to see who is at fault for the position that we're in, go in your bathroom right now and look in the mirror. And if you don't like that, 
Like I said, turn off your radio. Don't listen to this broadcast. Some of you are like little children, always calling. See, you don't like this, you don't like that. Bill said this, blah, 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 blah. Just turn off your radio, dummy. Nobody's asking you to listen. I'm talking to people who want to learn. I'm not talking to anybody else. I don't care whether you listen or not. I don't care if there's one person listening or five million people listening or 100 million people listening or the whole world. It doesn't make a bit of difference to me as long as who is listening is waking up, is learning to check, to discover, to investigate, to question. So with that in mind, let me get into tonight's subject matter. Many years ago, when I first began to speak out on the subjects that I know, I began to hear of a man named Bo Greitz. And people told me he was a great hero, and somebody showed me this tape that he brought back from the Golden Triangle. I watched this tape, and I knew right then, in the back of my mind, that something was wrong with this tape. But it didn't really occur to me what it was at that point. And I thought, I've got to uh, get in contact with this fellow, because he's trying to help us in what we're doing. He's revealing that the government's involved in drugs, and I'd revealed that a long time ago. He was even backing up what I had said and and uh, and what I had uh, and who I had named George Bush. <laughs> so I thought this guy is on our side, and I've got to get in touch with him. And found out he was going through religious organizations like crazy, contacting and most of them Christian fundamentalist organizations, many of them what you would call Christian identity groups. I disagree with their religion, and I disagree with their racial ideas, but I'm a constitutionist, as long as they're not hurting the person or property or any other person or human being on this earth, I really don't care what they believe or who they worship. And that's the same way that you should all think. But I thought it was very strange that Greitz was going around finding out who these people were and, and uh, telling them a lot of things that just didn't add up because he was telling different groups different things. And he was indicted in Las Vegas for using a fake passport to go over to the Far East and supposedly look for MIAs. The people that I've talked to who were involved in these so-called treks looking for MIAs tell me that every attempt that they made was sabotaged and it wasn't as Greitz tells it sabotaged by the government all of these trips and their training uh, exercise and everything were always sabotaged by Greitz now you can talk to them about it because I wasn't there firsthand this is what they tell me and many of them have written about their experiences so that's up to you to decide I've talked to these people, and I'm pretty sure that they're telling me the truth. Greitz tends to shun them today. He won't have anything to do with them. It's like he never knew them in his life. They also tell me this, and I've seen this in action on occasion. I thought it was strange that Greitz was being tried in Las Vegas for a crime that was committed in Los Angeles. And then Greitz ultimately told the world that he was acquitted that they found that he didn't really do it and then the, that uh, they had brought the wrong charge. Well, all this was a lie, folks. They didn't bring the wrong charge and Greitz was never acquitted. The whole thing was a show trial to endear him to the hearts of the patriots as being persecuted by the government that he so valiantly served. At one point, the prosecutor stood on the steps of the courthouse in Las Vegas and said, George Bush called me and told me to get Bo Greitz. We found out later from that prosecutor that that was a lie. George Bush never called him. The prosecutor, by the way, was not punished and demoted and transferred away because he had done something wrong. He was, in fact, promoted and giving a cushy job for having handled the little scam job so well. You see, no prosecutor in the world would ever bring charges in a court where there was no venue. None 
I mean, even the dumbest law student knows that the first thing ever to be decided in any legal issue is the venue, the jurisdiction of the court. So they knew when this started that there was going to be no conviction. The whole thing was a scam. And boy, it was milked for everything that old Bobo Grits could get out of it. Now, we didn't discover all this until a long time later. At that point, I thought he was my hero. And I wanted to help him any way I could, and tried. I went to Las Vegas for Freedom Call 90 and took part in that. And uh, was supposed to speak, but was not allowed to. Instead, I had to go off in some little room somewhere, and anybody that wanted to listen to me talk got to go in that little room and listen. But one thing that I realized right off the bat there especially on the first day when I shook hands and finally met my hero, Lieutenant Colonel James Bogreitz, was that he was a Freemason, at least a Master Mason of the third degree, because he gave me a Master Mason's handshake, which I very conveniently returned to him. Later that night, when it was supposed to be a dance, Greitz came up to me, and gave me the <laughs> foot-to-foot, knee-to-knee, chest-to-chest, arm-to-back, mouth-to-ear, and mumbled the password in my ear. And I did not give that back, because I thought this thing had gone far enough. When he gave his talk at Freedom Call 90, ladies and gentlemen, he said very clearly, when he was telling about his past experiences and what he had done and what he belonged to and how many medals he got and how many battles he fought in and all this kind of stuff, he said very clearly, and everyone there heard it, he said, I am a 32nd degree Freemason of the Scottish Rite. Now, his recent diatribe and challenge for somebody to prove this is a great bunch of bullshit bravado. No one can prove anyone is a Freemason, period, because it's a secret organization and the roles are sealed. He doesn't intend to pay anybody $10,000 in greenbacks or in gold coins or in Chevrolets or in piles of dirt or whatever you want to put up. We know that tapes exist where he has made this statement. We know that he also made this statement on the Billy Goodman happening on KBEG in Las Vegas. We know that some of you out there listening may have some of these tapes. And I'm asking you to go through your tapes, the old tapes, any tapes you have that has Bogrites on them, or any tapes the old Billy Goodman happening that has Bogrites on them, or if you happen to get a videotape of his speech at Freedom Call 90, Go through it, and you'll clearly hear him on one of those tapes somewhere say that he's a Freemason. And if you have the one of his speech at Freedom Call 90, you'll hear him say in his initial talk and introduction that he was a 32nd degree Freemason of the Scottish Rite. Now, in many episodes of The Hour of the Time in the early years, I've asked people to look for these tapes, and so far no one has sent me a tape where this is said. But I and everyone there who was at Freedom Call 90 heard him say it. Now, I don't care if you believe it or not. I don't care if anyone believes it or not. It happens to be the truth. I also know he said it on the Billy Goodman happening because I was listening to that broadcast when he said it. He probably said it on a lot of other radio talk shows around the country when he was giving his past credits of his accomplishments and achievements. If he said it at those two places, the chances are that he has said it in many others. And if you have tapes of those, listen to them. I offered in 1993 $500 reward to anyone who would send me a tape, an early tape where Greitz says that he's a Freemason. That offer still stands and will always stand. Don't send it to Greitz because it will conveniently disappear and you're not going to get $10,000 in gold coins. Because his challenge is to anyone who can prove that he is a Freemason. Ladies and gentlemen, 
even if we come up with the tape, what he is going to say is, well, I might have been back then, but I'm certainly not now. You see, he makes these changes all the time. He is an accomplished liar. But tonight, I'm going to prove it. The man has lied to so many people so many times that the people who are still listening to him, thinking that he's telling them the truth, must be the biggest idiots in this country. So listen carefully, folks, as I play reruns of tapes that we did to expose this charlatan way back in 1993. And remember, I will pay you the $500 if you send me a tape. Make sure you keep an original, but send me a good copy. Don't go away, folks, because you're really going to be floored by what you're going to hear. You're going to catch this guy in his own lies. First, I'm going to play a tape of his newsletter stuff, and then you're going to hear, you're going to hear all kinds of stuff. So just listen very carefully. Tonight, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Bo meets the monster. <laughs> Colonel James Bogreitz, I was intrigued. I thought that here at last I had found someone that could be my hero. I got behind him, and in every lecture I showed his videotape, I told people that we need to support this man, that he was not going to let us down. After all, he wore the uniform of the United States Army and had a chest full of medals that could have been the envy of anyone. But eventually, I learned my mistake. I learned who this man was and what he was up to. And so I stopped, stopped proselytizing people to support Lieutenant Colonel James Bogreitz in the Center for Action. I said nothing about him until I heard that he had begun a campaign of slanderous lies aimed to discredit me because he found out who I was and what I knew. When that happened, at Salt Lake City, at the Salt Dome, speaking at Survival Expo, I merely cleared the slate, slandered no one, but told the truth about what had happened and was physically attacked by Lieutenant Colonel James Bogreitz, who threatened to destroy me and ordered me never to criticize him and stuck his mouth next to my face and told me in no uncertain terms that if I ever crossed his path, he would kill me. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I did not flinch during that physical attack and it sort of 
took him aback. He did not know what to do or how to handle me after that point. But his wife understood what was happening and knew that I was not a coward and would not back down, so she pulled, pulled him away. He spent the rest of the evening lurking within sight of my booth, shaking his fist and making threatening remarks. Well, I did not reply, nor did I pay any attention to him. He wrote a book named Called to Serve. Called to Serve. If you have that book, you might want to get it out and follow along with me, ladies and gentlemen. For tonight, Bo meets the monster, and the monster is truth. Truth. Something that he doesn't know anything about. Something that will eventually, in its own time and in its own way, bury him. If you are a follower of Colonel Greitz, pay close attention tonight, for you need to know the way that the enemy operates to slander and try to destroy those of us whom you should, should be listening to. Mind you, you should listen to everyone believe no one, unless you check it out in your own research. But this is designed to convince you not even to listen not even to listen to those whom these people, these priests in the mystery religion of Babylon, slander. I quote from page 520 of Call to Serve, written by Lieutenant Colonel James Bogritz, Bobo Gritz, around here. Quote, a videotape of the Zapruder and Nick's films, which was made by assassination researcher Lars Hansen in early 1988, entitled The Truth Betrayed, Dallas Revisited, carries his narration, which states emphatically that Bill Greer turned around and shot Kennedy with a 45 automatic handgun. The tape, which he produced hurriedly in early 1988 as a research aid, as a research aid, to assist in determining if, in fact, this nagging theory had any validity, was given wide circulation by UFO researchers John Lear, a former contract pilot for the CIA, and former Navy enlisted man Bill Cooper. Hansen had originally approached me in May of that year in order to make contact with H. Ross Perot, whom he felt could underwrite a thorough investigation into this angle. But I was no longer in close touch with Perot and was preoccupied at the time with my upcoming trial on the passport indictment. Hansen indicated that he was by no means convinced of the theory, but felt that the evidence unearthed by researchers Perry Adams and Fred Newcomb, as presented in their manuscript, Murder from Within, warranted a thorough investigation. He had also met Lear while in the Las Vegas area and attempted to enlist his support in this effort, but became skeptical about his objectivity after Lear indicated he believed Kennedy had been killed to prevent him from going public with the UFO cover-up. As Hansen later stated in a letter to UFO magazine, the only aliens he believed Kennedy was intent on exposing were the Nazi war criminals who had come to infest the highest levels of our intelligence and defense industry establishment. In November 1988, while he was engaged in production of the two-hour video documentary, A Nation Betrayed, detailing my experiences in Vietnam and Burma, Hansen saw much clearer footage of the Zapruder films supplied by Robert Groden to the TV program Nova for a special they produced on the assassination. It was quite evident from the clarity of the film that Greer turned around twice, but that his left arm never moved from the steering wheel and that he did not shoot at the president. Beginning then and repeatedly since, Hansen made it clear, even to the extent of appearing on national television and radio programs, that his original statements on the video tape were not correct and that Greer did not fire anything at the president. Unfortunately, charlatans like William Cooper began showing the tape publicly for profit, using it to sell tickets to his public lectures and claim to have seen additional proof that Greer fired at the president in top-secret briefing papers he had supposedly had access to at his naval post. Even though proven to be inaccurate, Cooper continued to promote and sell the tapes as a come-on to his talks. Cooper also claimed that Robert Groden lied to the Senate Select Committee, apparently unaware that Groden never was called to testify before the House Select Committee, which had spared no effort to have William Greer brought in for further questioning. 
The great misfortune here is that countless concerned citizens have been deliberately misled by sensation mongers while a serious researcher who has spent years attempting to uncover the truth behind the Kennedy assassinations has had his integrity sullied by a tape he never intended to distribute to anyone but a small handful of serious researchers. To his credit, he has not hesitated in admitting his error publicly, but I feel his greatest error was entrusting it to certain individuals who themselves lacked the integrity to deal with it responsibly. Lieutenant Colonel James Bogrights, you are a despicable liar. And if you don't like that, sue me. Lars Hansen, you also are a despicable liar. And ladies and gentlemen, here is the proof. Right, that's your son, right, Phillipson? Right, and Bob Rice in studio, and let's go to North Hollywood, Charles Fry, and talk with Chester. I guess his name is that your name, Chester? That's it. Chris, okay, I'm sorry. And Chris, what's your question tonight? I, uh, listening the other night, I asked, uh, I was, uh, I heard a, uh, an answer to a question about why this film isn't being available. Oh, what do you mean? being made available. Uh, and I don't know if I understood uh, the answer. I, I don't know what the, I don't remember the question. Maybe, Bill, why isn't the film being made available? Are you referring to the film about the Kennedy assassination? Yes. Okay. Why isn't that film being made available, Bill? Well, Billy, the only copy that I have, when I have attempted to make copies for other people just to give to them, uh, the copies, uh, I guess the one that I have is like a third or fourth generation. Right. When I try to make a copy, it comes out much poorer than the one that I have, and it's, uh, some of the features then become indistinguishable. Right. Also, there's a question of copyright, and mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly who owns copyrights or what. I think right. if he's that the film is of such national interest to the American people that I don't think that that should, should have anything to do with it, but unfortunately it does. And why doesn't it have anything to do with it? I don't know if we can without getting ourselves thrown in jail. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what you heard was me, William Cooper, on the Billy Goodman Happening in 1989, telling people that I never made copies, didn't make them to sell anybody because it reproduced very poorly, and I was concerned about copyright. Now, listen to this. Well, you ain't know who got the right idea. Well, let me help you guys out a little bit. Uh, I, I'm a substitute school teacher here in Las Vegas, and last year at the Kennedy assassination uh, anniversary, for one week, I taught a class in one of the better high schools here, an honors government class, about 200 students on who killed JFK, and I showed them documentation for the first four days. Then I, on Friday, had them each write me a paper, about 200 students, on who they thought killed JFK, and then I showed them the film. I have the film. I know the man that made it, and if you want it, you can uh, call me at 1-800-634-3494, uh, and uh, send me 10 bucks, because that's probably what it'll cost me to copy it, and you got it, babe. Okay. It does show the driver turning. Now, it does show him shooting. It shows Kennedy's head being snapped back. Uh, I'm an expert. I've been in a, a Green Beret commander uh, for 30 years. I've worked within the intelligence community. I think it's public record. Uh, who, who's, who's speaking? It's Bo Grace. Uh, Mr. Grace. Uh, uh, sorry, Mr. Cooper, is this the same the film that was shown at the lake uh, last week? Uh, yes. A couple weeks ago? I, I can answer that question. Yes, it's the very same film. Yes. All right. Now, if, if, uh, if I contact you, you'll make that film third or fourth generation, no, whatever. Yeah, you have to contact Bo. I mean, you can contact Mr. Cooper if you want, but if you want to contact me, we've got a thing called a Center for Action. We're, we're tired of talking. We're going to start doing... Well, and uh, I've given you a 1-800 number. You can write me. I'll give you my address, and you'll get a copy. Uh, How's that sound, Mike? Have you, Chris? Yes. How's that sound? Well, that sounds good. I have one more question. Did you get, did you get the toll-free number? For my monster from his stars began to cry, then suddenly, to my surprise, he did the monster man. It was a great dark smash. It caught on and flashed. It was the monster man. From my love was born in the far east. For the monster did room where the vampires feast. The fuels all came from their humble abode. From my electro, they did the monster man. 
Dit was het geen laatste Hij is aan mij Dit was al mijn op mij The phones are open, folks. 602-333-2175. Tonight, tonight, the Trojan horse is riding across the land and disseminating disinformation just as fast as he can pump it out. I'm going to read you two and a half pages from the Center for Action monthly newsletter. Many of you who have been listening to this show for a long, long time will recognize the inaccuracies, the outright deception and the lies in these two and a half pages. Those who have not been listening to this show may not. Those of you who have the Linda Thompson Waco tape, whether or not you've ever listened to this show, will recognize blatant lies and slanders, attacks against the character of Linda Thompson. You'll also recognize a general theme here, and the general theme is you don't have to do anything. You don't have to pay any attention to anything or anybody. Bo Grites will save you. I'm sorry, Bobo Grits. For those of you who don't understand why we do that, telling born-again Christians that he's a born-again Christian and identity Christians that he's an identity Christian, telling New Age audiences that he's tried them all and hasn't found a religion that suits him yet. In reality, he is a member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, the Mormon Church, which in no way, shape, or form, ladies and gentlemen, can be considered to be Christian. They, in fact, believe that Lucifer is the brother of Jesus, which is about as far away from Christian as you can ever get. Not only that, but they believe the old mystery religion deception that man himself can ascend to the position of apotheosis and himself become God. And then a man and woman is sealed in marriage in the temple, and if they obey all the laws and rules of the church, the church, mind you, not Jesus or God, that they, when they die, will be given their own planet so that they can live in marital <laughs> heavenly intercourse forever and populate their own planet with souls. I've never understood why anybody could go for that, but I believe in the Constitution. You all know that. And these people have a right to worship whatever they want. But they do not have a right to deceive the rest of us. And that goes for Bobo, too. And many, many other things, which you're going to find out some of those tonight. We call him Bobo because he is, if he thinks we're so stupid that we won't catch on to who and what he actually is. And we call him Grits, folks, because when all of you out there finally get over your mesmerism and realize what he's doing and how he has lied to you, you're going to have him for breakfast and where I come from. That's Grits. Now let me read this, this deception to you here. It says, Don't be stampeded by a herd of rabbits. Three years ago, this October in Phoenix, I heard from numerous sources that a large armored force of North Koreans was poised in northern Mexico to attack Arizona. This report apparently came from an LDS church official. Patriots were flapping around like chicks at chickens with a fox in the hen house. The Blitzkrieg was scheduled for May of 1991. Simonette from Kerrville, Texas, had heard the same thing along the southwest Texas border with Mexico. And to tell you the truth, folks, I got those reports also. But we here at Kaji do not act upon anything and do not disseminate information unless we have it from many different reliable sources and can actually collect proof. So you never heard that from us. And you never will hear any of these terrible rumors from us. His reports were supposedly coming from a sheriff. I assured the concerned citizens that I would come to Arizona and hold their hands if a single Oriental tank driver crossed the state line. The dreaded day came and went without incident. It reminded me of the day when a large religious group sold all they had, wrapped themselves in sheets, and stood on a mountaintop in Tucson, convinced they would momentarily be beamed up. Special offer this month is Colonel H. Speed Wilson's book, Rapture, Prophecy or Heresy. See the order form. 
Throughout the 92 campaign, I was told about boxcar loads of guillotines being brought into the United States. Some sources claim to have actually known people who looked in and saw the ghastly chains, stocks, and blades. And I, too, heard these stories and discredited them because we could find no proof. Unfortunately, each time I sought to confirm the reports, the elusive eyewitness could not be found. Now, here's the first deception, folks. They include reference to me in the same paragraph with this disinformation as if I was the source. And, of course, I was not. But it doesn't make any difference. There are probably two or three million sheeple out there who will believe all of this nonsense without checking without batting an eye. He goes on, It didn't surprise me to learn that I am supposed to be a 32nd degree Mason. The reporter Bill Cooper said that he had an audio tape of my admission to being a high-ranking Mason. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is a barefaced lie. I have never claimed to have an audio tape saying that he was a Freemason. I said the tapes exist because I know that the Billy Goodman happening was taped, and I know Freedom Call 90 was taped, and I know if he said that he was a 32nd degree Freemason on those two arenas, he would have said it elsewhere. It's just a matter of finding those tapes. I have stated that we do not have the tapes, and I have offered a $500 reward on many different occasions during the broadcast over the last four years of the hour of the time. I was also branded a Trojan horse agent. One reporter even said that I always stood with my heels together at a 90-degree angle, the square, which proved I was a Mason. It was said that I communicated a secret Masonic token with every handshake. For a couple of years, folks, he did. And we have reports from many, many people around the country who understand the Masonic handshake. And he goes on to try to cover for it here something about a broken index finger. But the truth is, when he shook hands, he dug his thumbnail into the third knuckle of the right hand of the person shaking his hand, which indicates that he is a master mason. The truth also is that at Freedom Call 90, as I sat in the audience, when Bobo Gritz introduced himself to the audience and gave his background and his community achievements, one of the things he said, and I quote verbatim, I heard it with my own ears, quote, I am a 32nd degree Freemason of the Scottish Rite, unquote. And he went to talk about his involvement with the Boy Scouts and other things. I was amazed as I looked around at all the patriots sitting in that room who appeared not to have understood what he just said. Later, when we had the chance to talk to each other in the breaks and at lunch, I was able to discern that many patriots did indeed understand what he had said. And there were approximately, oh, I would say five or six hundred people in that room, ladies and gentlemen, who all heard it. He goes on to say, the fact is, I am not, nor have I ever been a Mason of any degree, and I have never told anyone that I was. I did break my right index finger while rocketeering off a sand dune in a fast attack vehicle we were demonstrating for use in the empty quarter of Arabia. We impacted nose first so hard that my hands were torn from the steering wheel despite the four-point off-road harness. S and I got out. Staggered around a bit. The bezel on my GMT watch popped off in a triple flip that had us both laughing. Not wanting to fiddle with the dispensary, I never bothered to have the finger fixed. Now, folks, anybody who knows anything about a Masonic handshake knows that it has nothing to do with an index finger. And so does Bobo. Ever since then, 1985, it is uncomfortable to grip that finger joint, and I oftentimes keep my right index extended while shaking hands. And in parentheses, he says, secret Masonic token. In truth, William Cooper is mad because I refer to his book, Behold a Pale Horse, as Behold a Pail of Horse Hockey. I openly challenged challenged his claim to be a naval intelligence officer, which he never was, and his lifting of top-secret special intelligence files, which show everything from who runs the world to who killed JFK, all about outer space aliens, government dope, and anything else that hits the news. Notice how he did this, folks? I have never claimed to be a naval intelligence officer, never was, and have never said it in my entire life. I was a petty officer. Attached to the Office of Naval Intelligence, Naval Security and Intelligence to be exact, and ONI, 
And at times, NIS, all of you who have been in the Navy know what those terms mean. I was attached to the intelligence briefing team of the Commander-in-Chief of the United States Pacific Fleet and have included proof of that in the appendix of my book, Behold a Pale Horse. In fact, the pertinent pages of my service record are included there, and you may take them and check with the Navy to see if they are true and correct. You have my permission to do that. She also says here, always oh, he says, uh, lifting of top secret special intelligence files. I've never claimed that I did that either. Everything that I saw, I saw in the performance of my duties. And I've never said otherwise. And to my knowledge, neither is anyone else. He says Cooper's a fraud, and he knows it. When challenged about documents, they conveniently burned in a garage fire the day before being unveiled for the world to see. That's not true either. It's all on tape. The only document that I ever copied and kept for myself was burned in a garage fire years before I ever came out and even began to talk about anything. And the existence, ladies and gentlemen, of that document was verified by my best friend at the time that I copied that document and showed it to him on the eve of my wedding on uh, June uh, the 1st, 1972. Uh, and his name is Robert Swan. And uh, a letter from him is included in my book. He's running around out there somewhere on a yacht, uh, which was his dream, and he finally... Uh, earned enough money to purchase the boat of his dreams, and uh, at some point in the future, he will be a guest on this broadcast that, and will confirm uh, the fact that I did have those documents and, and uh, that the, infor the information uh, that I saw while I was in the Navy was, in fact, true. He goes on to say, my Trojan horse connection is genuine, and that's about the only piece of truth that he says in here. The horse is an original Special Forces emblem and was the crest of the 10th Special Forces group for decades. Now I ask you, ladies and gentlemen, why would a United States Special Forces group have as its emblem a Trojan horse? We all know what the Trojan horse means. Does this man think that we're so foolish that we don't understand the meaning of that? He goes on to say, Cooper got so angry, he made a telephone answer tape during the 92 campaign that said Jesus Christ wouldn't claim anyone who supported Bo Grites, and that is a blatant lie. I have never had any answering tape on my machine that said anything even remotely resembling anything like that. And I would never, never, never deign to speak for Jesus Christ, or anyone else for that matter. He says, Cooper's capers are typical of those who live and pray off the patriot movement for profit. They seek to sensationalize the least fragment of rumor and rush about like Henny Penny shouting, the sky is falling. Cooper is one of the worst, but too bad he isn't alone. And now if you've listened to this show, if you've read my book, you know that I don't grab fragments of rumor, and I don't rush about like Henny Penny shouting, the sky is falling. Everything that I do is well-researched and well documented. I make mistakes sometimes, so do everyone else. Late 1992, an outfit calling itself Cosmos Service claiming to have a world panacea. They were going to pay off the national debt, run the Fed out on a rail, and do a lot of other pie-in-the-sky shenanigans. Cosmos even said after the election that Clinton wouldn't take office. They said a military coup would restore constitutional government. They said the banks were all closing and numerous other predictions which never hatched. And ladies and gentlemen, those of you who were listening to this program knew the truth of all that. For I was the first and only one who publicly revealed the truth about Cosmos. And I said, for all of you that were anticipating an imminent collapse of the banks in December of last year, I stated on this radio on December the 6th that that would not occur. And those who listened to me saved themselves a lot of money and a lot of heartache. They were right about one thing, he says. Bogrites would not even give us the time of day. Friends, my best friend and grandma taught me at a very young age to tell the difference between S.H. blank blank and Shinola. It would have been a, an insult and disgrace to her, my high school diploma, you and the fact that I have led men in combat to think that a presidential candidate would fall for those road apples. 
Yet a group of so-called patriots, including Dare Shout, Arizona, B.B. Kidd, Colorado, and Jackie Patru, Illinois, became so upset over my cold shoulder to Cosmos that they broke away from America first to join these world-class prevaricators. And folks, that's not true. That is not why B.B. Kidd broke away from the Greitz organization. I can't speak from the others, but I do know D.B. Kidd. And you can check with her. Now D.B. plans a nationwide... Listen to this. Now D.B. plans a nationwide rally in Washington, D.C. this month to oppose the Fed. I am certainly for getting rid of the Fed, but I won't contribute to a person who has demonstrated such poor judgment in the recent past. Tom Donahue wanted me to have her on my radio show, On the Scene. I allowed for the occasion on a Friday when I was out of pocket and Tom hosted the show. We don't need any more cracks within the Liberty Bell, but poor leaders often stand behind the mask of a good cause, and that's his excuse why he will not support the March on Washington. Now, the March on Washington, folks, was Project 93 put together by D.B. Kidd to protest the Federal Reserve. Bo Greitz, literally on his radio show and in his newsletter, talked thousands, maybe tens of thousands of people into not attending that rally. September the 29th. The real reason, folks, is he doesn't want anybody to go to Washington on September the 29th. And he continues, when Jack McClam, Jerry Gillespie, and I went to northern Idaho in support of the Weaver family, we were told that 30,000 blue-helmeted UN Cambodian troops... Folks, this is one of the biggest lies that he's ever told. He did not go to Idaho in support of the Weaver family ever. And what I was reading there was directly, word for word, verbatim from his newsletter. He was called by the Federal Bureau of Investigation while he was in Phoenix, Arizona. He went on their invitation. When he got there, he pretended like he was against the FBI and served a summons on the FBI. A summons written by our guest that you heard last night, Ivy West. His sole job was to rescue the federal government from the situation that they had found themselves in and could not extricate themselves from. He wore a wire the whole time. He was, in fact, working for the Federal Bureau of Investigation. He was not there to rescue Randy Weaver ever, not from day one, period. In Montana to oppose any patriot response to the Weavers. That's one I never heard, folks. I sent Jerry to run down the Cambode rumor while Jack and I worked to free Weaver, Harris, and the girls. Jerry actually found them. Well, almost. He did find a bunch of Oriental men and women picking mushrooms in the burned forest areas of Montana. It seems they, the mushrooms, sprang up in the wake of such fires. The army of pickers represented every major Oriental grocery su supply chain, the U.S. Uh, from San Francisco's Chinatown to New York. None of them was even wearing a blue bonnet, let alone a beret or helmet. About a month later in Oregon, we spotted a van at our motel with a sign on its side which read, Mushroom Buyer. Now, this is the same thing that he used to attempt to debunk Linda Thompson when she said that they had located, indeed, three Army personnel from the country of Nepal, and Greitz trumped those three Army personnel from Nepal up into 50,000 Communist Chinese in an attempt to get people to stop listening to Linda Thompson. Now listen to this. What about Mark from Michigan with his reports about multi-jurisdictional task forces and black helicopters? More of what Cooper is made of. It is easier for these wannabes to make up and fan rumor than it is to work a regular job. Folks, there is no rumor about the black helicopters. It is true, as you heard from many, many witnesses who called in on this show, and from many, many documented reports and photographs from around the country. And I just got a whole envelope of photographs of black helicopters from uh, many different people today. And what about this multi-jurisdictional task force? Well, if you'll look up Public Law 100-690, you'll find it right in there. Mark speaks as if he does have some MI or military intelligence experience. His word pattern indicates someone who once wore a uniform or at least looked at a lot of SOF magazines. 
Mark says in his public presentations that he can't reveal his last name for fear of government reprisal. Most Patriots folks know his last name. I know his last name. Linda Thompson knows his last name. Anybody that wants to know his last name knows it. How come Bobo Gritz doesn't know Mark's last name? How deep does it get, he says. He says that he is the commander of Op 4 Brigade. It is, it is possible that he is in the military, and they are using him to see how gullible the Patriot movement really is. No one with an IQ more than their shoe size would really buy this bull. The truth is, folks, no one, no one with an IQ more than their shoe size would buy this newsletter. Some facts. The military has a lot of aircraft. Listen to this. Listen to how he scams the sheeple into complacency. Some facts. The military has a lot of aircraft painted in dark colors, not to menace Americans, he says, but because it is a natural color scheme for military operations, either in combat or practicing for combat. Regardless of what Mark says, the birds are marked. Pilots don't own their own aircraft. Each day, the sorties are assigned, and crews may or may not fly the same plane. Even air crews need to be able to locate the assigned flying machine from a ramp full of lookalikes. The FAA only requires a 3-inch ID. Combined with a dark background, the aircraft can appear unmarked, and that is true, folks, with normal Army helicopters and Army aircraft. That's exactly what they do. These black helicopters and black aircraft, however, upon close inspection, show no markings whatsoever. They also have tinted windows and windshields on them that apparently can change darkness, sort of like the photosensitive uh, glasses that some people wear. Why that is, I don't know. He says, more recently, I spent time with Linda Thompson, and Indiana attorney who narrates the video. That's a lie, folks. The narration on the Waco video is not Linda Thompson. Which means, ladies and gentlemen, that he has never truly, personally spoken with her. That's obviously another lie. If he had ever spoken to Linda Thompson, her voice is distinctive. It cannot be mistaken. And he would not say that the voice on the tape is Linda Thompson. Bobo. He says, Waco the big lie. Linda is very articulate and aggressive. She gives a super interesting brief on what happened at Waco. If you turn her voice off, Bobo, it's not her voice. Do you hear me? Are you listening out there? It's not her voice on the tape. It's a professional narrator. Linda spent thousands of dollars to have that tape professionally done. And if you've ever talked to her in real life for five minutes, you know that's not her voice. So your contention that you had a long discussion with her and know her is also not true if you could not recognize that that was not her voice on that tape. Now, folks, I'm going to speed this tape up to attempt to get if to... If you turn her voice off... ...a place uh, that we've got to cover before the end of this hour. So just bear with me for a few minutes. Officers enter the room window from the roof, and the agent peer. You've all seen Waco the Big Lie, so we don't even need to get into that. It is old stuff. Thousands to have it edited and produced, and she has never made that money back. He says both Cooper and Thompson have teamed up to slander me. They say that I am a CIA agent collecting Patriot names. I have never mentioned. Grites or grits. And now I turn over this tape. What I was saying is I never so mentioned him this. as a Both CIA agent. Thompson have teamed up to slammer me, slander me. They say that I am a CIA agent collecting Patriot names. I say before God, angels, and you witnesses that they are liars. I have fought hard to free our POWs. I would not cover up government drug operations. I broke the police line to save the Weaver family and secured Gary Spence for them. He didn't break the police lines to save the Weaver family. He was called from Phoenix by the FBI to come up there and was, in fact, doing the bidding of the FBI. And we have him on tape saying that. And he, in fact, did not secure Mr. Spence. 
ladies and gentlemen. Also at Freedom Call 90, in July of 1990, he read a letter from Randy Weaver asking for his help. Randy Weaver said in that letter that he was afraid that the feds were going to kill him and his whole family. Now, if he was interested in saving Randy Weaver, why did it take him three years, or two years, two and a half years, actually, to get there? Can anybody answer that? He also read that same letter on many radio shows during 1990. Where am I here? Here we go. He says he ran for president to bear witness of the divinity of the Constitution. Well, that's funny. If you care about the divinity of the Constitution, why, in the election before last, were you running with David Duke, who doesn't know anything about the Constitution or the Bill of Rights, was the head of the Ku Klux, Ku Klux Klan. The Ku Klux Klan. An organization responsible for many illegal acts, which takes away rights and freedoms from people, and has murdered people. Why were you his vice presidential running mate if you care so much for the Constitution? He goes on to say, Christ has said in Matthew 7, 16, and 20, you shall know them by their fruits. And Bobo Gritz, nothing could be closer to the truth. He says, none of these quests have netted me more than criticism and defamation by the controlled media. What have either Cooper or his confederate Thompson done? Folks, you can answer that. I don't even have to tell you. Other than ride on the shoulders of those who have braved adversity. Those of you who know me know that I've never ridden on the shoulders of anyone. Period. Well, I would advise you to choose very carefully. He goes on to say, I'm reminded of Lars Hansen's short 1980... Listen to this carefully, folks, because I'm going to play you some tapes in a few minutes. Well, he covered all that, so I'm going to skip ahead to the tapes. ...came to help us as a volunteer. ...shimmed down and played it over... ...meeting at least three people, and you wanted to make him president. Teaching assassin. Well, I'll get to it, and uh, it doesn't. Well, I'll tell you what, folks. We'll play that tomorrow. If uh, I don't get it, that rear killed the president, and uh, you'll be able to hear it because it's not too much. It's you know just listen very closely. Oh, here we are, and gentlemen, and you will hear the truth. Okay, back to my guest, Bill Cooper, who is uh, calling in from uh, Fullerton, right? That's your son, right? Fullerton? Right, and Bo Bright in studio. And let's go to North Hollywood, California, and talk with Justin. I guess his name is... Is that your name, Justin? No, it's Chris. Chris, okay, I'm sorry. And Chris, what's your question tonight? I, uh, listening the other night... Right. When I try to make a copy, it comes out much... Well, you don't know who exactly that is. Well, let me help you guys out a little bit. Uh, I am a substitute school teacher here in Las Vegas, and last year at the Kennedy assassination uh, anniversary, for one week, I taught a class in one of the better high schools here, an honors government class, about 200 students on who killed JFK, and I showed them documentation for the first four days. if you want, but if you want to contact me, we've got a thing called a Center for Action. We're, we're tired of talking. We're going to start doing of the truth of it. Listen to this. And I've got a little problem here. Okay. Here we go right now. Hey, what's going on tonight? Yeah, I just want to talk a couple of seconds about the uh, the Pruder tape. Oh, here we go. Yeah. Uh, I noticed... I mean... Well, we're not going to get this in, folks, so uh, I'll play this part of the tape that you've missed tonight, tomorrow night, and tomorrow night we're going to go into the uh, attempted takeover of the Constitution Party. Uh, these people are being charged with felonies. Uh, they are, in fact, stealing money from you. They are uh, defrauding you. Uh, they are misrepresenting themselves. And uh, you don't want to miss tomorrow night, especially if you're a member of the Constitution Party. Good night, folks, and God bless you all. Glad you could make it. <laughs>